Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. I have a question for all of us, but really it's a question for those who will be affirming their faith today in a few minutes. And I want you to kind of go with me on this. But once you have been confirmed, I don't ever want you to think about coming to church again. <laughs> Rather, I want you to think about being the church. When we come to church or go to church, we have this mindset that when we're done and we go home, well, we're done. We can just get on with life. But you never can leave the church. Not when you've said yes to your baptism, not when you have given your life to God. When we say yes to our baptism, we sign up to be what God is doing in the world. And it's a 24-hour, 7-day-a-week kind of thing, not just sort of a Sunday morning or a Wednesday night thing. You can't just simply come to church and then leave it. Not like you might go to school and leave it or even be on a sports team for a season or go to work and leave it for the weekend. It's not a part-time kind of thing. It's rather, it's who we are. It's an identity thing. It's about who God is and what God makes of us. And that's what really baptism is all about. God forgiving you, welcoming you, claiming you, and in your affirmation you say, yes, this is who I am. You know, years ago when your parents brought you forward for baptism, in a sense, what they were saying is, well, here's another one to be a forgiven and sent person for God. Dear friends, when we say yes to our baptism, we say yes to this call to be church. The only question really is, well, what kind of church are we going to be? I mean, what kind of witness are we going to make about what it means to belong to God? Because one way or another, all of us, we do make a witness. It may be a good witness, it may be a bad witness, but whatever we do, we are making a witness because we have signed up. You see, faith, it's not just a Sunday thing. It's an all of life sort of thing. This past week we've been looking at, or month, we've been looking at Luther's small teaching book on the faith, uh, the small catechism. Looking at how to live, the Ten Commandments, how to pray, the Lord's Prayer, how God comes to us in communion and baptism. And today we look at the creed about what it means to have a God, but also for God, what it means for God to have a people. When we say, I believe that God has created the heavens and the earth, we are saying that God does not want to save the church, but God wants to save the world. We are thinking of that verse, for God so loved the world. You know, it doesn't say for God so loved only certain people, or for God so loved only the church, or God so loved only this church. But there's something wide open about that. For God so loved the world. And when we say the world, we really mean two things. One, we mean the whole wide world. But two, we also mean my whole world. What does it mean to think about that? It, it, it's to recognize that all of my life is a gift from God. That everything that we have comes because we have received it from God. Now, we don't always think about that that way. And in a way, we sort of take our life for granted or we even think that, you know, somehow I've been the one that has made life, my life. I mean, I'm the one that did the homework. I'm the one that got the grades. I'm the one that's been practicing on the field. I'm the one that knows how to throw the ball, catch the ball, hit the ball, run with the ball. This is what I've done. But think about this. Do any of you know a friend that has had a torn ACL? or broken a bone and has had to sit the season out on the bench and when you run by you look at that person you say thank you God that I can still run and it's a moment when you realize you know even our health is a gift from God when we say I believe that God has created what we're saying is that we believe that everything is a gift from God and one of the ways for us to get in touch about what that means, that God is involved in all of life, is to do an exercise. And, and I'd invite you to think about doing this. And that is uh, to write down a hundred things that you are thankful for, and then to do that every day for 30 days. And don't repeat. 
Now you might start a little easy. You know, I can say thank you for mom and dad. Maybe thank you for my brothers and sisters. I know how that goes. Uh, thank you for my friends. But after a certain point, you know, you've covered all the big stuff, and then you start getting down into the little stuff. Thank you for this pew that's holding me up. Uh, thank you for the plate and the fork and the spoon and the dinner. Thank you, Michael, for the vegetables. <laughs> he doesn't like vegetables. Uh, <laughs> thank you for that warm bed. And what I mean by that, it's more than just simply having a generic attitude of gratitude. But it is recognizing when I say, I believe that God is created that he's involved in every facet of my life. And every facet of my life is involved in God. You know, when you're active in church, you know, you come, you know, let's say you come every Sunday and you come every Sunday night to Michael's, uh, to, the, to the teen group on Sunday night, you're only here 2% of the week. 98% of your life is still lived at school, at home, out in the world. When you think about what Jesus did on the cross, he did not die on the cross for just the 2% of my life. He died for the 98%, the 100% of my life. Because God's care and concern is for the 100% that God created. And God seeks to bring the 100% back into a relationship with God. So that's why we go from I believe that God has created to I believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Luther talks about what does it mean to talk about Jesus Christ as the Son of God? He says, well, it's about a relationship and what God seeks to do in bringing us into a relationship with God. He talks about what Jesus did on the cross, you know, all the suffering he went through and what happened to him. And when he gets to the end of it, he then asks this question, well, why did he do it? Why did God die on the cross? What's this all about? And finally, Luther says, you know, he did it all for the sake of a relationship that we might belong to God 100%. That we might be freed to live a life that God had created us to live 100%. And that we might live a life that's not so much about me, but understanding what it means to trust 100%. He said, all this he's done so that I may be his own, live under him in his kingdom and serve him in everlasting innocence, righteousness, and blessedness. Let me put it another way. God does not love the church. God loves the world. God loves the 100%. So Jesus died for bringing us into a relationship with God and then God sends us out into the world so that we might be a sign, that we might be agents, we might do what God has created us to do and be all along that we might share that. And when we say yes to our baptism, what we are saying yes is I want to be a part of what God is doing. I want to sign up to be a part of God for 100% of life. So what does it mean to be church? What does it mean to think of God involved in 100% of my life? Luther talked about the Holy Spirit and what God does that way. And to make sense of that, I'm going to ask you to take your red hymn book, pull it out. There's a couple in front guys in the front pew. Pull it out. We're going to turn to page 236 in the very front of your hymn book. Page 236. Not him, but page 236. The very top of the page. Anyone who's confirmed signs up to this description of what God is up to in the world. And there at the top of the page it begins, You have made public profession of your faith. Do you intend to continue in the covenant God made with you in baptism? In other words, do you intend to be the church? And there's a brief description of what that means. It says to live among God's faithful people. Notice it says people plural, not person, individual. In other words, there's no example of a solo believer in the Bible. There is not one example that says, I can be a Christian alone and I don't need anybody else. Dear friends, the Christian faith, it's a team sport. You think about it. It takes two people at least. It takes one person to pass out the bread and the wine. It takes another person to receive it. Baptism, it takes two people. Forgiveness, it takes two people. It takes one person to say, I blew it. And another one to say, God forgives you. 
Second line, to hear God's word and share in his supper. If we're going to know what God is up to in the world, we learn to hear the voice of God here in this place. And we do that by listening to the scriptures. And we do it by listening to the heart of the scriptures that this is Jesus for you, forgiveness for you, and we practice that here. And when it says to hear the word of God and share in the supper, it's not a sort of once and done kind of thing. Well, like I read the Bible once or I had communion once. It's a rather keep on doing this kind of thing. And why do we keep on doing it? Because life is never the same. Our life is not the same. The world is not the same. God keeps moving with us. And if we're going to make sense of what it means to be church, to be a Christian, to say yes to Jesus each and every day, we have to keep on doing these things to make sense of our life in God. You know, it's an interesting thing in the Bible. There are very few stories uh, in the Bible about anything that happens in a church. Most of the stories of the Bible happen out in everyday life. Jesus on the road, the disciples on the way. The one thing we discover in the book of Acts is that the Christian church, just a little passage, it says they would, they, the Christian church would gather regularly to hear the word and to share in the supper and they did that so they, they might make sense of what God is doing in the hundred percent of life. To make sense of what does it mean for me to be a Christian wherever I am at school, at home, at work and so forth. Being church is not about going to church and leaving it. Though there is a kind of a coming and going that's involved. In other words, we enter into this rhythm of coming and listening and receiving so that we might learn what it means to do that in everyday life. Going out. That going out is described in the, the next three lines on that paragraph. Going out to proclaim the good news of God. Going out to serve all peoples. Going out to strive for justice and peace. In other words, Doing church and being church is not just simply for the pastors. It's not just simply for Michael. But rather being church is about all the baptized, all the confirmed. It's what we all do. In a few minutes, you will profess your faith. And you will uh, share your confirmation verse. And there is also that faith statement that you have written that is in the uh, bulletin insert. But once you have done that, it's not to say that somehow I am done. Because this activity of serving others and sharing God's word and striving for justice and peace is something that we keep on doing. It's a 24-7, everywhere, every place kind of thing. Because God, Father, Son, and Spirit, it's a 24-7 kind of God who's involved in 100% of our life, everywhere. Amen.